Hello, everyone. Welcome to the webinar today. Thank you for showing up. As you see, we've got our poll open there, a uh, poll that we were voting on, best feature of a PSA. And it looks like over half of you, 54%, uh, said they use it to help with ticketing. 8% uh, said to keep up with SLAs, 23% invoicing, 8% timekeeping, and 8% other. So that's an interesting uh, poll um, feature there that we can uh, get to. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start the uh, webinar here. And if we can close the poll here. As I said, my name is Scott Colonico, coming to you from GFI Max here in Scotland. With me is Eric Anthony from the Eric Anthony Group. Why don't you go ahead and, and uh, say hello there, Eric. Hey, everybody. And also with me is Len DiCostanzo from Autotask. Say hello, Len. Sure. How's everybody doing out there? Looking forward <laughs> to a great webinar today. OK, so what we're going to go ahead and do is, uh, so there's our, uh, so that's uh, everybody who's going to be on the web webinar today. You can feel free to ask questions during the webinar by using the chat interface there at the bottom on, of your screen or in your uh, your uh, webinar control panel. You can just type in a question. I'll get the I'll get the uh, the question and we'll open it up to Eric and uh, Len later on the, in the program. We'll have a Q and A at the end of the session, and we'll take all your questions. So be sure to keep 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 those questions rolling in during the uh, presentation. Um, and so this is a little bit about what we're going to cover today is we're going to cover uh, introductions, which you just did. Uh, Len's going to start off with an auto task overview, how the system works, what are the benefits of it, some of the ways that you can tweak it to, to make it work better for your MSP or IT support company. And then Eric's going to talk about the art of cutting through the noise. And what Eric is going to do, concentrate on, or how to fine tune auto task to make things work better and smarter for your system. And at the end, we will be taking some questions and answers. So without further ado, uh, Len, I'm going to turn it over to you and good. let you uh, do things the other task way. Excellent. So you see the screen right there right now? Yep, looks good. Very good. So uh, yes, I, I am Len DiCostanzo, Senior Vice President of Community and Business Development here at Autotask. Basically what that means, uh, on the community side, I get to work with uh, our customers like Eric Anthony, without a doubt, one of our uh, premier uh, users of Autotask out there today and uh, we get to work uh, on the business development side with our vendor partners like GFI and uh, get to bring uh, bring us together in webinars like this and really share how you could maximize your managed service practice with both Autotask and GFI Max and uh, I'm just going to share a little bit about Autotask, give you a brief overview of the company I'll give you kind of a summary slide of how we help automate service delivery through our, our integration with GFI, and uh, you know I, I'll take a couple of questions throughout. If uh, if you guys put them up there, I'm sure uh, Scott will ask uh, at the end of the event. So just pop your questions in, and then we'll uh, get right into Eric, and he'll actually demonstrate how he uses both our products and the integration to run his MS uh, managed service practice a little bit better. So who is Autotask? Well. We uh, certainly uh, can make the claim that we are the number one provider of cloud-based IT business management software. Uh, we've been in business since 2001, so uh, as a cloud-based solution, you can see we were well ahead of the market, and our product uh, really is built for the cloud from the inside-out approach in 4.9's availability. Uh, there's a lot of noise in the background, Scott or Eric. I don't know where it's coming from, but I'm, I'm not sure if it's being heard out there, but uh, I am. So uh, in any event, uh, Autotask, again, being in the cloud, we are uh, really built for the cloud. As I mentioned, uh, approaching 4.9's availability, we know being a cloud-based solution, we need to be there when you want us there. And really, Autotask is all about service automation. When you're talking about running your business better, uh, you, it certainly is about automation. You, you're trying to sell automation and technology solutions to your clients to help them run their business. Well, here Autotask is to help you run yours. From our CRM module, you can uh, run a marketing campaign, generate leads that will automatically populate Autotask, and you can manage your opportunity pipeline uh, right inside Autotask, building quotes for your services, your managed services, and uh, once you're uh, doing those quotes and you win that business, typically as a managed service provider or a solution provider who's going to bolt on some managed services, you've got to execute on a project, some type of a remediation engagement to clean that environment up 
so it's ready for you to support it. It's got your standards, uh, and you're ready to go support that. And you're going to use our project management module to manage that project. Uh, fixed price contract, you can, again, collect your time and expense. You can send out two or three or four invoices, depending on your progress on the project. The billing tied to a phase and build all your phases and tasks, tie your resources into the project, and even include uh, tasks that your client needs to execute, such as installing an electrical outlet in the server room, and then use the client portal built into Autotask so your client can actually manage their task and you know when they're ready for you to come on in and connect everything up. Once the project is done, use the service desk module where you can open tickets. Uh, we saw the results of the poll. Uh, PSA uh, primary use has been ticketing, but as you can see with Autotask, as a really uh, rounded uh, application, IT business management software, we actually have more than ticketing. We replace over five different applications uh, in your business, as you can see. And then, of course, uh, as you use the service desk module and open tickets, you certainly still want to track your time, even though you might have a recurring contract around managed services and the services are delivering for that fixed cost, but at the same time, you've got some time and material, break fix type work, and uh, we do just fine. Even if you just start in that transition into managed services, you're still running that break fix time and material business. We handle that uh, as good as anything because that's where we were born from, just like uh, a lot of you guys out there. So we handle you from break fix through managed services, uh, any type of practice you want to run, always collecting time and expense and sending those invoices out right out of Autotask. With integrations to accounting solutions, you can take those invoices and hand them off to your QuickBooks, to your Sage accounting application, whatever it may be. Uh, and, and you're going to have your service business running uh, inside Autotask and helping you run your business just a little bit better. We also know you guys sell product uh, included in your services. We integrate with several uh, quoting tools that you can uh, go and look at multiple distributors, price and availability, and build that quote. And again, it'll show up right inside Autotask because our integrations really are second to none. I'll share a little bit more about that uh, shortly. But uh, integrations across uh, many different platforms, different types of solutions you guys are out there selling every day. And as a former solution provider, uh, which I ran my business for about 20 years, been doing this quite a bit. I know how valuable integrations into Autotask are. I'll share a little bit about what an integration means, especially uh, with our partners here at GFI Max. And we also help you collaborate and build your own network to collaborate through the client portal. Again, as I mentioned earlier, working with your clients. We've got Taskfire, which is a ticketing system that lets you work with internal IT resources, and it's tethered to your Autotask, a co-managed services type solution built-in online community right inside Autotask. Our community software allows our, cl our clients and users to share best practices and share what's going on out there in the industry. So a lot of uh, product for you to use inside Autotask, but I always like to say it may look uh, fairly comprehensive, and it is, but your business is very comprehensive and touches a lot of different areas. And one of the real benefits, uh, of course, is that we are replacing five different apps. Everything is integrated from CRM and hands-off data to your project module, to your service desk module, to billing, all built in one, reduce that double entry, and uh, really going to help you run your business better. Autotask is global. Uh, we go all over the globe, not only on our own, but with GFI. Uh, we've just translated our product uh, to German uh, and Chinese and it's out in the market right now. We're about to introduce French, Italian, Spanish, and Japanese into the market. And uh, we've got offices in the UK, over 25 right now, uh, in our office in Richmond. We got uh, an office in Australia, uh, Latin America, and of course, uh, we're out in Germany, and really looking to go uh, in a real global way with localized products. So if you're watching this webinar and you're speaking those languages, uh, come and see us. And if you're speaking English and you're out of America and you're a customer listening in, it's always good for our base as we expand our market. Autotask puts 50% of our revenue back into the product. So as we move into new markets uh, and, and generate new clients, new customers, you're going to see a lot of innovation in the product as we, again, continue to evolve and transform our own software as you guys are transforming your business. And I think the beauty of being in the cloud is as the industry changes and your service delivery models change, 
we're going to be able to change right along with you and the impact will be minimal to you as opposed to having to install an update on a server of our software. It's all going to happen in the cloud and again, uh, it's a good uh, solution for all of you out there that were out there in the market. 50% of our revenue back into the product always driving innovation. Autotask is also open, uh, so you really can use any browser uh, that you want from Safari, Internet Explorer, uh, as you can see. So we're open on that front end. I also like to say anyone in your organization can and should be using Autotask from billing resources to non-billable resources. There's a lot of opportunity to take notes and track conversations in the CRM side. A lot of things you can do uh, outside of the billable resource. So get all your folks into one system where all the data is in one place. We like to say we're also open in the middle. We're not going to force a way to operate on you. There's a lot of workflow automation rules uh, built into Autotask so you can configure to run uh, your business the way you want to. And we like to say we're open on the back as well. Uh, our integration with GFI, as you can see, uh, an RMM and across the different products in the GFI Max suite, all of them integrated into Autotask. And as you can see, if you're quoting, I mentioned quoting, we've got integrations there. We've got accounting integrations and uh, uh, Outlook Exchange integration. So a bunch of other applications out there integrated in Autotask, again, giving you that opportunity to scale service delivery. And one of the things that we pride ourselves on is Autotask Academy. We are education, over 40 live webinars and workshops per month, not only around the product, Autotask, and how to use it better, but business building webinars, talking about how to build an IT service catalog, what managed services should you be uh, setting up and delivering, and of course, perhaps uh, business management, how do you handle finances, pricing, and the like. Tons of education available, 120 plus on-demand training videos and webinars, boot camps and road shows. And ultimately, the goal is to help you run your business better, not only through education, but by automating various processes that you run. And here you see a little bit uh, about automating the incident management process really taking those events that are happening every day and again tying back to the fact uh, you guys see a lot of value in, in using a PSA for tickets. Uh, right here you see whether it's a GFI alert or using our client portal or an email from a user or somebody picks up the phone, that event is going to drive a ticket creation and across an alert it will automatically open a ticket inside Autotask and you're not going to have to data enter any information. It'll tie it to the asset that uh, provided that alert to the GFI Max uh, solution. And the client portal, uh, very automated. A lot of things can happen. That user can open a ticket right from their desktop, send it into your auto task. It'll automatically create a ticket. And a lot of those workflow rules built inside of auto task take over. Even on a user call, you can open a ticket using favorites inside auto task in as little as two clicks, and then all those workflow rules go, start happening, start going, firing off, assign that ticket to the right resource who might be uh, assigned to that particular account, notifying that end user that you got the request for service, and uh, the SLA clock starts ticking, so if you're into the managed service world, or getting into it, or you, you want to figure out how can I uh, track my progress and respond in four hours or two hours to this uh, request for service, our SLA module starts ticking and helps you prioritize which call you need to handle next. And when that ticket is complete, a survey feature, feature built right into Autotask is going to fire out a survey. And not only are you going to know how you do when you deliver your service, but there's a benchmarking capability, again, enabled by the fact we are hosted and multi-tenant, that every service provider that uses Autotask can send a benchmarking survey Everyone has the same questions, and not only can you see how your client feels about uh, your service delivery, but how do you compare against the network out there? And you can benchmark yourself and see where you stand, and always look to improve service delivery based on that feedback. Track those tickets against contracts, whether you're doing time and material billing or a recurring or managed service type contract. We've got many different types of contracts or billing relationships that we enable you to, to, to use through Autotask. The way you work, incident-based billing, you want to build 250 an incident, you can build a 10 incident pack right inside Autotask. 
You can do a retainer fee and reduce that. You can work time and material. You can work flat fee, block hours, really any way that you work. Once that time's entered against a ticket, again, it moves into an approve and post process where you could then send out your invoices and analyze reports, validate, check out profitability, and again, always try to improve how you execute on an automated incident management process. And really, the key to managed services, you've got to have some metrics that you can promise to your clients, make them want to pay you a monthly recurring fee. And what you see here are a couple of key metrics, response time, resolution plan, resolution time. Just focusing on response time, how long are you going to respond uh, before you respond to a request for service? You can say within two hours, within four hours, you can say next business day. There are guys out there charging more uh, money for a quicker response. And uh, again, that response time enables you to complete a task you're working on right now. You know the clock's ticking, but you know you can finish what you're doing now and then jump on and respond. And the key is finish what you're doing, promise a response window, and hit that response window. What you end up getting out of Autotask is an SLA report. Another key uh, feature or capability you need to provide in your managed service practice is perhaps some monthly operational review meetings. You're doing a lot of things remote using GFI Max. You're doing a lot of things remote over the phone using your auto task. You need to show your client the work you've been doing through the tickets. And what you can see right here are all of the tickets that you have opened. Did you meet that first response and how long did it take? And of course, the one time that you maybe didn't, at least now the client can see that you did in fact deliver against what you promised. It validates why they're paying you, and it gives you a really good reason to go in and talk monthly to your client. I like to call them monthly operational reviews or more meetings, because as you're showing them how well you've executed in the past month, you're going to be able to pick up some more work, and that's the goal of the monthly operational review. Again validate what you're doing. I mentioned surveys and service delivery benchmarks. And here you're going to see on a very specific question what your rating is versus the network average. And what is that network average? You know you're doing a little bit better than the network average. And that actually could be a great selling point as you're out there selling your services uh, to the prospects and even to your clients and even internally to have your staff feeling real good. And if you're below the average, as you can see here, you know you've got some work to do uh, and to get it up into being the best in class uh, amongst Autotask users. So uh, if you want to see more, you can certainly, uh, I'll give you a, a, a special code in a second, but you can also come meet us and see us. If you're an Autotask user or a GFI user, GFI is going to be at our Community Live Worldwide User Conference uh, in, at the JW Marriott in Orlando, Florida. Over 70 sessions around not only product training, technical training, but also some business building sessions, how to build a fantastic managed service practice. CompT is going to be there uh, with their MSP Trustmark credential training. So if you want to see more on how to build a better managed service practice, come join us at Community Live. Certainly, you could connect with us and understand and hear what's going on right now at Autotask, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, of course. Uh, go search for Autotask and like us uh, where you can and friend us and follow us along as we announce a lot of new things that come on up. Uh, let me just get that out of there, guys. So uh, a special offer for those attendees on the webinar today. We're going to provide a $1,000 voucher, a US $1,000 voucher for new customers who buy today through May 31st. Uh, you can see email sales at autotask.com with the subject GFI 0426.12. $1,000 voucher for Pro. We know that you came from this webinar. Or you can give sales a call at 518-720-3500, extension 1. Uh, love to see you guys take advantage of the special offer and come to Community Live as well. Uh, it's a great time to buy Autotask and then jump into a boot camp and a bunch of workshops that we have uh, June 10th through the 12th at our user conference. So there's my email and contact information and also our sales email address if you're interested. You want to see some recorded webinars, not only one we've done with GFI, but some uh, business building ones. There you got the Autotask Academy website. And uh, there, there you go, Scott. Time for Eric, I imagine. Thanks okay. for uh, listening.
Hey, thanks, thanks a lot, Len. Hey, do you? I, I'm sorry. Let me have too much coffee. You don't mind if I put the if I send the um, the uh, the the voucher number out to everybody on the chat interface there? Is that okay? So they can cut and paste. Might be a little easier. Oh, sure. That's okay. fine, man. That's a wonderful okay. idea. I like that. Okay, so I'll just send that. So that's that's in your chat interface there, everybody. And then here's Len's uh, email address. That might be a little easier to uh, try to write things down from the PowerPoint presentation. And just you know, to just spelled to, it right too, Scott. Yeah, well, it's just it's the Italian thing, you know. I, I have yeah. plenty of problems with my last name too. Um, yeah. I'm going to um, let everybody know. Also, just to let everybody know this will be. I'm recording it right now, and this will be up on our our website probably next week. MSPBusinessManagement.com. You'll all get an email probably about a week from today. You'll get an email with the exact URL, and they'll show you where you can go down. Uh, Listen to the webinar on MP3. You can watch the, the the PowerPoints. You can download the PowerPoints, and then we're also putting them up on iTunes too. So if you do a search for MSP Business Management on iTunes, you can uh, download the MP3 and listen to it on the go. Okay, Len, we got some questions that rolling in. Thank you very much, everyone. Keep sending those questions in, and then I'm going to turn things over to Eric, and Eric's going to go for about for a little bit here, and then we will um, take Q and A at the end for the most exciting part. The second most exciting part of the show after everyone's presentation. Yeah. Okay. You ready, Eric? Yeah. Can everybody okay. hear me? Yep. Yeah, here you go, Eric. Okay. So you're you are now the presenter. Okay, awesome. Okay. So just make sure that your yeah, your screen's showing. Yep. There you go. Got it? Okay, cool. Take it away. Okay. Well, thanks Len for uh that introduction and uh especially the premiere part. I don't know about that. Um just to give you guys a background on my company is we've been using Autotask and GFI since about 2007. Uh, I started the company in 2007 after doing IT in the corporate world for about 15 years and just uh, saw a need for a, uh, a better solution out there. Now we're still in the process of um, transitioning from break fix to managed services like probably a lot of you are. Uh, you know we have about 30 servers under uh, management and about 250 workstations. So I don't know where all of you guys fall, but uh, for us, that's where we are right now. And uh, we're using Autotask and GFI Max, just like they said, to uh, integrate everything together and make everything work, uh, streamline our processes, and keep everything rolling like it should for our customers. Now, one of the things that uh, I liked about GFI Max and Autotask when they first uh, brought out the integration between the two was how simple the auto mapping is. And I know that uh, GFI Max has some good uh, recordings and webinars on that. Uh, so if you can get to those, those are probably the easiest way to figure out how to go through the auto mapping. We'll go through it a little bit, but the uh, the auto mapping is just super simple to set up GFI Max with with Autotask. Uh, of course, what uh, Len covered in his in part of the integration was automatic ticket generation against servers or workstations. Uh, this is great because everything that you have as far as a server or a workstation that's monitored in GFI Max, as soon as you link it with that auto mapping, those tickets that are generated from GFI Max and created in Autotask are automatically applied to those servers and workstations. So in Autotask, you can go back in and run reports showing uh, what's happened against that server or that workstation even if you have the workflow rules set up like we I'll show you in a minute to not email you every time you get uh, a ticket generated against one of those devices so in auto or yeah in autotask you can go in and literally see the ticket number and what happened what queue it was in and the dates and times so that you can see all the performance that uh, happened against that uh, that server in this case it's a server but you're not necessarily necessarily getting an email every time that you get one of these monitoring alerts now the other great thing about GFI max and autotask integration is that when you clear a ticket or you close a ticket and add time to it in GFI max it automatically closes the ticket in autotask so if a event happens in GFI Max that automatically resolves itself, like uh, say you're monitoring services like DNS services or DHCP on a server, 
if that service restarts itself and comes back online, the auto task ticket automatically gets closed. So you don't have to worry about all these open tickets being generated in auto task and then you having, go, having to go through every day and close every single one of them. You don't have to do that. It's done automatically for you. Likewise, when you clear a check in auto task, say you have a check for, um, if, you, if you have GFI Max, you're probably familiar with the um, hacker checks. And those are mainly for informational purposes. I know when they go off the scale, you know, there may be something we need to go check, but a lot of times it's just an informational thing. As soon as you clear that check in GFI Max, it's going to close that ticket in Autotask as well. The next thing is you can enter time and summary notes from inside GFI Max dashboard. Uh, that means when you're working in your GFI Max dashboard and you're working on uh, events that have happened that you need to deal with, as soon as you deal with that and you go in to clear the check, you can enter time and notes against that check and those time and notes automatically become billable time. They act just like a time entry in Autotask. So that, that time is automatically billed and the ticket is closed just like you would if you had to go back and forth. But you can stay in GFI Max and get all that done without having to switch back and forth. And this is the screen where you would do that. Let's say this was a hacker check. Uh, say I went in and it was off the chart, so I go in and I'm going to check the security logs and everything. And so I'll go in and I'll put, you know, describe what I did in there, put the start time, the end time, hit save and close, and now I'm done with that ticket. I've billed it, the client will get the bill, and uh, I've generated the revenue. Now the problem with using any type of um, monitoring system to automatically generate tickets is that it can create an overload. Now Autotask, the one thing that I found out early on was that they had these workflow rules and the workflow rules are just, I hate to say a dream come true, but that really is the, um, the thing that makes this work because it allows you to take those uh, events that happen and come over from GFI Max and create a ticket it allows you to use your workflow rules in Autotask to customize how Autotask reacts to those tickets. It allows you to prioritize ticket notifications. So uh, as you all know, in, in Autotask, you have several layers of priority that you can assign to a ticket. Um, for an example, if you had a disk that was running out of space, that's going to be pretty critical. So Autotask can automatically escalate that type of ticket to critical and then all the workflows for critical tickets take over. Or if it's just a monitoring alert, you can say, hey, I don't want to be notified of that monitoring alert unless that performance indicator stays in the red zone for, say, 45 minutes or an hour or whatever you think is um, the right number for your business. Monitoring tickets automatically placed in the monitoring queue. Uh, if any of you use Autotask currently, uh, you know that Autotask has all these queues and you can set up your own custom queues to have your tickets placed into. Uh, this helps to just segment all of your um, tickets into different queues so that in this case all of your monitoring queues go in a separate box so that they're separate from say all the, the tickets that your clients are actually putting in for you or your people in the office are putting in when customers or, client, or clients are calling in. That way they don't um, mess up or, or give that flood of stuff coming into one queue that's hard to weed through. They're kept separate so that, you know, it, it keeps the noise down. Email notifications sent based on alert type and priority. This allows you to use the workflow rules to send notifications on your tickets based on what type of alert it was. Like we said before, a disk space alert is going to be more important than a performance alert and the priority. So you can modify all those notifications so that you're not getting a flood of emails uh, coming in every hour just because performance indicators are going into the red zone for a couple of minutes because a backup is running or somebody's downloading a big file or something like that. Now, in GFI, you set up your uh, PSA integration, and the most important part for you know working with your workflow rules and things is setting up the 
how Autotask reacts to different types of events coming over from GFI. The 24 by 7, that's your 24 7 events that uh, if you're running a server, you know, happen every 5 minutes or every 15. Uh, those are going to get assigned a medium priority and put in the monitoring alert queue and by default are going to have a three day offset as to when they're due. Uh, same thing with daily safety checks, but then with device outages, I've set it to automatically make it critical, still put it in monitoring alert, but make sure the due date offset is just one. Now these are just your basic settings. These go into Autotask, but then your Autotask workflow, workflow rules can modify these to upgrade them based on what type of alert they are. Because a performance alert is obviously a 24-7 check, and a drive space alert is also a 24-7 check. So how do you get it distinguished between those two? And that's where the workflow rules come in. Now when I was getting ready to start you know, setting up my workflow rules, this is kind of a, just a quick flow chart that I put together, kind of just to do the basics as to how I wanted to set it up. So I've got a monitoring alert coming in from GFI. That creates the ticket and assigns it to the monitoring queue in Autotask. And then Autotask workflow rules take over and they modify the priority, the due date, based on the type of alert. Now, it can be a critical, performance, or other is the kind of the three criteria that I set up. If it's critical, it's an immediate email notification. So I get emailed immediately if, a, if the things that I've des designated as critical alerts happen, I get emailed right away. If it's not critical, then I wait for 45 minutes. It'll still show up on my GFI board, so hopefully one of the guys in the office or myself are going to see it. We're automatically going to grab it, we're going to take it, and we're going to work on it. But if for some reason it's left unassigned for 45 minutes, then we're going to get an email going, hey guys, you've missed this. You know, Call the client back or, or get it started. Uh, at least make some type of progress on it so the client knows that we've got it and we're moving forward. And that keeps me within my 60 minute uh, reply or response window. Then performance. Uh, performance things, you know, I don't want to know until after 30 minutes. And if 30 minutes have gone by and that performance indicator is still not closed automatically uh, because the issue resolved itself, then I want to get a notification so that me or one of my guys can check it out. Now this is the screen that you'll see in Autotask and it just lists the uh, workflow rules for the service desk. You can also set up workflow rules for CRM and for projects so that you can manage those uh, automatically as well so that the right people get notified at the right times, whatever. Um, you will notice if you have Autotask, if you go into the service, test, service desk workflow rules that there are a lot of workflow rules already put in there for you. And I use those in the beginning just to kind of look at them to see how they worked to get an idea of how Autotask set up their own uh, workflow rules and then started building my own based on there. And you can see I've got a couple like after hours notification. Basically, you know how I was talking about queues before, if we have work that the client specifically wants us to work on after hours, we'll put that in a special queue. And if any of those uh, tickets are in that queue and they're set to be due that evening, whoever's assigned to that ticket will automatically get an email about 6 o'clock at night telling them that they need to work on that ticket that night. Uh, critical ticket notifications, those are already put in there from, uh, from Autotask and you can adjust it as, as your SLA requirements need. Uh, there's my drive space alerts and I'm not going to go through all of them, but suffice it to say it's, they're easy to set up. Uh, it's not a lot of work, but it can save you a lot of work on the back end. This is what the uh, screen looks like when you go in to set one up. Basically, you give it a name. This one is the drive space alerts. Uh, when a ticket is created by anyone, and then under conditions, if the queue name is equal to monitoring alert, that means basically, in my instance, everything coming over from GFI, and if the ticket title contains disk space. And that's where I'm looking at the ticket title that came over from GFI Max, and I'm saying, oh, it's a disk space check, so I want to escalate this to critical and send myself an email. 
Other workflow rules that I've set up is resend a critical notification, a critical ticket notification, if uh, a critical ticket is still unassigned after 15 minutes. Uh, this just makes sure that if a critical ticket comes in, we don't miss it. Uh, resend a new ticket notification if still unassigned after 45 minutes. That means any new ticket that comes in from the monitoring system, if we don't take care of it or at least grab it and take responsibility for it within 45 minutes, it's going to email me and the guys to do something about it. Uh, reminder notification eight hours before a ticket is due. Uh, we work on a lot of tickets. Sometimes we have to wait for customers to contact us back or vendors to contact us back. And so one of the things that uh, I made sure of, I wanted to make sure of that we did was if we were waiting on something from a customer or a vendor, we didn't wait until after the ticket was due to find out, hey, this ticket's overdue. No, I get an email eight hours before the ticket is due uh, so to make sure that we hit those uh, SLA requirements. Uh, the benefits of integration, uh, manage workflow notifications. Like, you know, the title of this presentation is, is The Art of Cutting Through the Noise. Any monitoring system can create a lot of noise. Uh, GFI is, uh, is my favorite, um, but the, uh, the noise that can come out of anything can just inundate your inbox. It will inundate your you know, I don't know how many of you are using GFI Max and have actual using the wall chart in your office, but that's a great thing too to see things coming up live on that. Uh, it just helps to manage your workflow better by not uh, creating all the noise that can distract you throughout the day and letting you focus on truly what is critical for your clients. Automate SLA compliance. Uh, whether you have a formal SLA or you just you know make promises to your customers you have an SLA because you've made promises to your customers and so you need to make sure that that SLA is taken care of. Uh, you know, some people may not keep track of you as, as much as you keep track of yourself, but it really helps just with your word of mouth and, and how you take care of things if you know that you're taking care of your SLA and taking care of your customers the way that you should be. Track tickets by device and be able to generate historical reports uh, to show value delivered. You know, we try and go out and see our clients. Um, most of our clients are smaller, so we don't need to do the monthly reviews on our bigger clients. We do do that, like uh, like Len uh, was talking about earlier, and generating those MOR reports. But we go out at least twice a year, and these reports allow us to show them uh, what's happened on each device, how many tickets have been generated against each device. Uh, it's a good way to to really honestly go in front of the customer and say, these are the things that need to be replaced. You know, this server is acting up uh, a lot. It's not causing a problem now, but as you know, the server gets older and older, it's going to get worse and worse. So we need to preempt that, and we need to look and put in the budget for maybe the next six months, next 12 months, uh, whatever is appropriate for them, that new server. Uh, you save time and money by reducing duplicate data entry. Uh, this is probably one of the greatest things uh, between GFI Max and Autotask besides just the record keeping and workflow is the fact that I can stay in GFI Max and know that all that time and reporting is getting into that ticket so that not only am I generating revenue, but I'm also generating accurate bills for my customers. Because uh, I don't know if any of you have experienced this, but with the economy the way it's been, uh, people are looking at their bills a lot more, and if your bills aren't accurate and saying exactly what you were doing, uh, they tend to question them, and that's uh, that just takes up more of your time having to explain it. So, for my business, having the combination of Autotask and GFI Max has really uh, increased my automation. It's allowed me to have less people on staff and take care of more customers. It's given me the control that I need to make sure I'm taking care of all of those customers properly, and it gives me the scalability. I know when to add people, when not to add people, and I know that when I add people and clients that these two systems combined are going to be able to take care of whether I've got 25 customers or whether I've got 1,000 customers. Uh, these two solutions are going to work for me, um, and that's about it.
All right. Excellent. Well, thank you, Eric. Thank you, Len, for both of you guys for being here. As I said, uh, this uh, webinar is being recorded. It will be on our MSP Business Management website uh, next week. It's also going to be on iTunes. I've sent that email or I've sent that address around through the chat interface. Now we'll go ahead and take some Q&A. We've got a few questions that came in during the course of the program. I think both of you guys did a pretty good job of uh, explaining things, how things work here. One thing that I've seen, uh, it's kind of uh, from Bobby and Stan, a few other people, a couple of questions. I've seen this come up a lot, and they're asking about um, performance monitoring in, in GFI. And I, I think w w what they're mentioning is that they're seeing a lot of performance monitoring, it, a lot of alerts come out of GFI you know, before they even get to auto task, and they're wondering about how, to, how they can kind of cut down on some of those. And I'll, I guess I'll ask you, Eric, but then also, um, we just we made a video about this because this this came up a lot with uh, the sales team and the sales engineers talking to people. I'm sending that around now. That's in the chat interface, and it's a it's a it's a video on how to you can configure performance monitoring at on GFI so it doesn't send out as quite as many alerts as it does default. You know, see so the do alerts that do come through are ones that are, you know definitely showing a problem. I mean, have you uh, experienced anything like that, Eric, or what are your experiences there? Well, like pretty much everybody, and, and this came up at the conference in Orlando uh, as well, is performance checks are probably the number one um, culprit for the flood of emails that come in. And, you know, step one of that is just going in and, and making sure that every, because every server is different, we all know that and setting up the alert thresholds so that they're in the right place uh, so that that server is really only alerting you uh, when those, uh, those events are critical for that server. Uh, the other thing that uh, I believe I remember seeing on the roadmap for GFI or uh, maybe I was just talking to Mark Petrie about it, but uh, scheduling windows where the performance indicators uh, wouldn't apply or you'd have a different threshold because I know one of the problems that we all have is performance indicators going way up as far as memory use and disk use uh, during a backup at night. Mm -hmm. So I know that uh, that's something that's being looked at. Uh, but as far as the flood of emails, you have to make sure that you turn off the notifications in GFI Max, and I don't think I covered that. But basically, all of my notifications, uh, except for the SMS messages that I receive when a server is actually go, goes down or they lose internet connectivity, um, all of the all of the notifications go through Autotask now. So I don't have that flood of performance uh, emails that come through because it first goes into Autotask and then Autotask waits before sending me an email. And if it still is performing poorly after 30 minutes, then I get the email. Okay. All right, excellent. Yeah, that's that's. I think that's basically. If you if you take a look at the video, I mean, basically the the I talked to um, Chip over in the states, and basically the thing what they were saying was, to, in order to get the alerts, the thresholds right, you 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 kind of monitor the server for a few days and see what the normal threshold levels are, and then you can adjust the alerts to that so it doesn't you know create more noise at the uh, auto task end there. Um, this is I guess for both Len and and um, and Eric. It's really more of a kind of a technical question, but a question from Paul, and he was saying, I think he was having some problems using Autotask with uh, some, of the, uh, some other browsers other than Internet Explorer. I mean, it is cross-browser and everything works and, and there shouldn't be any problems. Is that correct? Have you seen any issues or? So this is Len. Uh, definitely uh, our product is, supports uh, many, you know, the different browsers you're using. There are cases where some of the admin functions might not be fully functional in a browser other than Internet Explorer, although I do believe in, in the next upcoming release all those features will be uh, browser independent. But the general feeling was we work through the primary uh, or key components of the product that you use every day and that more people use every day uh, that, that uh, you know, perhaps the admin or the person who sets Autotask up might only touch it once or that person would be using the browser. That was the last piece we did. So okay. it should all be uh, in and usable cross-browser support. If you're having any trouble, shoot me an email or reach out to our tech support team and let them know. Okay, yeah, there it is. And, that, and uh, what's the address for tech support there, Len? I'll put it up there too. 
Uh, you know, they could just send an email over to sales, that same email. It's, we don't want to confuse them. Or for an Autotask okay. user, <laughs> you know, right inside their Autotask, uh, if you're a present user, you just drop down the Help button, and uh, the client portal is right there for you to click. So just drop down the Help button, click on Client Access Portal. It'll bring up the Autotask portal, and just the way we let you use that to let your client users open tickets, you can use it to open one with us and let us know what's going on. All right, excellent. And what what kind of what what kind of work any what kind of workflow improvements? What can we look forward to from Autotask in the next few months here? Oh, good question. I mean, we have uh, again one of the nice things being that we are a cloud-based application. Every six to eight weeks, we are putting out a major release. So uh, we've got a, a, a end of month release coming out. Right, I guess right actually two months now because we just had a release so right after community live we've got a bunch of enhancements around our project module uh, again we've got uh, new languages coming out as well but our project module uh, is coming out with some really uh, fantastic new features and capabilities our APIs are being updated so integrations uh, can access more of our auto task and, and touch more pieces so again if you're uh, inside Autotask right now when you log in one of the nice things, again, is we can really share a lot of information across the community. So your left side panel actually lists all of the improvements that are coming in the next release. So you could just log in. On your first login, you're going to see the side panel. And uh, you could jump in and see all the wonderful things that are coming up. Or again, off the top menu bar, punch in the uh, click on the community button. That'll take you into the community software. And again, you'll see. Uh, all the details of the upcoming release. Uh, excellent. Hey, and uh, just for um, for old time's sake here, Eric, what before you were using? How long have you been using uh, Autotask or PSA integration? Uh, I think I started using it pretty much as soon as it came out. Okay. And and so, what was it like? What was record keeping like? And and trying to keep up with servers like before uh, you were able to tie everything in a package. Oh, it was all done on Excel spreadsheets. Really? Okay. <laughs> And then you just just uh, email those around when you had a problem, huh? Yeah, uh, basically we kept them on an FTP server, so whenever <laughs> anybody needed to get to them remotely, uh, they could log in and get to a client. But uh, this makes it just so much easier. And I want to just comment on something that Len said about you know if you're on Autotask and having everybody in it, um, it, it really makes a difference to have all of your employees in it. It just keeps all the record keeping from one end of the shop to the other. Uh, all compliant and all conforming. Um, I even have my 14-year-old who just started working for me. Uh, he's got his own limited-use license now uh, because you know I've got him reformatting computers and reloading Windows on them, and I need to know you know what stages they're at, and he goes in and and puts all that information in. So uh, there's a, a claim about how easy it is to use. If my 14-year-old can use it, uh, I think anybody can use it. Yeah, there's a tagline for you there, Len. Easy enough for a 14-year-old to use. Yeah, well, you know what's funny is when I was 14, I had to go work in an auto junkyard. I sure wish I was uh, <laughs> using Autotask working in Eric's business, so big uh, difference. That's a whole different kind of auto. And on that note, I think that would be a great <laughs> one to leave it on. I want to thank yeah. Len and Eric for joining us again here um, at the uh, at the webinar. Uh, any, last, any last thoughts, guys? Uh, how over to you, Len, first. Well, no, I just think uh, if you're using GFI Max, please take a look at Autotask. If you use an Autotask, please take a look at GFI Max. I think the value you're going to see uh, of a combined solution is greater than the individual parts. So, you know, I just encourage everyone to, to take a look at each of our products, and hopefully, you can be as successful as Eric. Okay, Eric, and over to you. Well, I just want to say uh, thanks for, for inviting me to do this thing today. And if anybody has any questions about integrating Autotask and GFI or how I came about, you know, the affordability of doing it, because hands down, I have no question that I make more money having these two products in place than I do without them. Uh, they can feel free to contact Scott and Scott get a hold of me or however we want to do that. 
Okay, I just put your email. It's Eric at EricAnthonyGroup.com. Is that you? Awesome. That'll work. Okay, yeah, it's up, that's up there now. And like I said, yeah, well, about another week, watch your email inbox for the link to the uh, download and uh, where you can listen to and watch the webinar. And if you, everyone's around, I'd like you to come around next month again for May for our webinar where we have uh, Avoiding Internal Sales Roadblocks. So that's going to be more of a kind of a strategic kind of sales webinar. A little different than Autotask, but uh, still hopefully um, – Got some good information there for you. I want to thank everyone. Thank you very much for coming out again, and uh, we'll hope to see you next month. Eric, Len, thank you a lot. Sure. Thank you, Scott. Good job. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks. We'll see you. Bye.